So, how do you make the first play in Clash Royale, and where do you place the card? A couple weeks ago, a guy named Woody, who is a really cool content creator and manager for 100 Thieves, he was the guy who made the clan Reddit Alpha back in the day. He posted an idea on Twitter about how to fix the two minute stare down at the start of every game, as he called it. It basically is saying for the first two minutes of most games, both opponents are afraid to make the first play. And I got to thinking about this, and I remember how, like, one and a half years ago, I was always afraid to make the first play in Clash Royale. Like, I literally would never play the first move. I would wait until Double Elixir, and then i wait for the move, I would counter push, and just try to win the game off of that. But, whenever I, I watched pro gameplay, I noticed that the best of the best, Surgical Goblin, Soki, Num Sensei, these guys, back in the day, they would always make the first play. And so, I did some testing and research on... Um, the first play and I figured out how they make the first play and why they play it. First of all, you will find that you will have a lot more opportunity in single elixir to outplay your opponent than in double elixir. If you have, say, a really cheap cycle deck and your opponent has an expensive deck, if you're waiting until double elixir to make the first play, then you're gonna lose like 90% of the time. So it, unless you have a deck like, you know, Golem, Lava Hound, uh, Giant, Pekka, or Splash Shard, then if you wait till that double elixir, you're going to lose to any of those five decks then I, that I just named. And even with those decks, um, the only decks that I never recommend starting off the game would be a really expensive Graveyard deck, maybe like a really expensive Lava Hound deck, and a really expensive Golem deck. Or a Golem deck without... Um, a building in it. So how do you make the first play then? And that's the question that a lot of people ask because a lot of people, you know, they make the first play and then they overcommit, their opponent counter pushes them, and they lose. So it's really important that when you make the first play you don't play a card that you're not supposed to play first. So first of all I recommend looking at your starting hand and thinking to yourself in this starting hand if I play for example my Musketeer Will I do I have another air troop in hand? So you always gotta be thinking, if I play this card to start off the game and they rush me opposite lane, then am I going to be able to defend? And if the answer is yes, then you can start off the game. And most of the time the answer is gonna be yes, unless either you have a really bad deck or a really bad starting hand. So what cards are good to start off the game? I recommend any one elixir card, two elixir card, or three elixir card, they're always safe to start off the game. Um, if you have the ability to split the card, then you should probably split the card. If you don't have the ability to split the card, you can just play in one lane. But anything 1, 2, or 3 elixir, you can start off the game just about with any deck, unless it's like a really expensive deck, and you will not get punished. Um, as far as 4 elixir cards, you don't necessarily want to start off the game. I'm going to go through the 4 elixir cards, 4 and 5 elixir cards that are good to start off the game, and the ones that are bad. So, would you start off a Baby Dragon in the back? Probably not. It's usually not a good idea, because the only decks that Baby Dragon is paired with is like Golem and Lava Hound, and usually you wouldn't want to start it in that deck. Magic Archer is usually a good play to start off the game with. If you have a cheaper card, I would play that over Magic Archer, but if Magic Archer is the cheapest card in hand, it's okay to play. Lumberjack, you always want to save for defense, so you don't start it off. Battle Ram, you usually want to save for opposite lane pressure, so unless you have a really bad hand, don't start the game with Battle Ram. Inferno Dragon? No, never. Mini Becca? No. Hog Rider? Hog Rider is one of the few cards that's actually like a good play to start off with. I would usually recommend playing Hog Rider over any other card to start off the game, unless you have, say, Bats in hand, or Goblin Gang. If you have like Swarm Troops that can be split, you split your cards and then play your Hog Rider second. But if you don't have like Swarm Troops that can be split, you always want to play your Hog Rider first play. Um, obviously never Fireball. Occasionally Electro Wizard, but really only in a couple decks and only if you have a really bad starting hand. Most of the time I don't recommend it. Never start a Musketeer, never start a Hunter. Furnace is okay, but you have to make sure if you start a Furnace that you have a lot of air troops in hand because if they go Lava Hound or Loon opposite lane, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, obviously never Tesla, never Bomb Tower. Night Witch is okay if you have a Giant deck, but not if you have a Golem deck. Mortar is always a good starting play. 
I would play it over any other card in the game if you have Mortar in your starting hand. Just keep up the pressure because Mortar decks are usually pretty um, cheap and you want to cycle to your second Mortar and basically outcycle their tank if they have one. Fly Machine can start off the game, but it's not usually a good idea. Zappies, if you split them, that's a really good play. Um, better play than most most starting uh, plays. Dark Prince is okay to start off the game with. Not preferable, but it's okay. If you just want, you like wait like 30 seconds so they're not playing anything, you can start Dark Prince. Rascals is another card that's really good to start off the game with. What you want to do is you want to split the Rascals first play. And then say they go one lane, you can counter, you can um, rush opposite lane with the rascal that they didn't go with the troop in. And then as far as that, you the only other troop you start off would be uh, split barbarians or goblin hut. Other than that, anything for a life five elixir you'd never want to start. You could start off with an elixir pump. That's an okay starting play. But you only want to use a pump if you have a ground troop available to defend your pump or a tornado to like pull a miner to a king tower, to, for example. Um, and then you can start off a Barbarian Hut, but you just really have to be careful about those Lava Hut and Bloom decks. And other than that, as far as cards that are more expensive than 3 Elixir, those are the only cards you ever want to start the game off with. So now let's go through some specific decks and how you start off the game with each of these decks. Okay, before we get into the specific decks, one trick that I will say is if you have a deck that has like Musketeer or Inferno Dragon, it's okay to... To, it's kind of okay to start off the game with Musketeer or Inferno Dragon, but you have to do it the right way. What you want to do is first you drop an Ice Golem, and then after you drop the Ice Golem, this works with this works with like Bridge Spam um, and Hog Rider decks usually. You start the Ice Golem in the back, and then you can put a Musketeer behind the Ice Golem if they go the same lane, or if they go the same lane, you can drop an Inferno Dragon behind the Ice Golem. If they go opposite lane, you probably don't want to do that, but if they're going to go same lane as your push, you can drop the Ice Golem first, then like the Musketeer or Inferno Dragon behind it. And I'll get into some examples later uh, in the specific decks of when you want to do that. Okay, so first of all, you have Splash Yard and Golem. Now with these two decks, you really never want to start off the game. I will give you one tip on this deck. One thing that I've seen like Royal and a lot of other like really good Golem players do is to wait for their opponent to drop a troop and then say, for example, they drop a troop. Let's see, you drop a troop here. You go Night Witch in the back, and then you wait and see what they do. And if they keep going same lane as you, you can drop, you know, a Golem in front of your Night Witch. But other than that, you really would never want to start off the game with the Golem. The only time you'd like Golem early game is if you drop Night Witch in the back first, and then you just use Golem to tank for your Night Witch. Now with Splash Yard, usually, I mean, you really just play this deck really slow, and you kind of wait until they make a move. I don't think you, like, in any situation will rush opposite lane with a push. You always just want to go same lane as their push and literally just counter push whatever they do. It's pretty simple to play. Now, if you have a cheaper cycling graveyard deck, it is okay to start off the game with this deck, but you just kind of have to be careful about how you start it, especially this deck because it's more expensive than, say, um, the variation that I used to use that had, like, Valkyrie and Mega Minion. Uh, with this deck, it's, it's kind of risky to start off the game, but if you do start off the game, you want to go... I would say the best play would be Tombstone, and um, I would first of all only Tombstone if you have Tornado in Cycle, because if you Tombstone and don't have Tornado in Cycle, they can just balloon opposite lane and you're kind of, or Hog opposite lane, you're kind of in trouble. Or um, you could Barbarian Barrel the bridge, or you could start Ice Wizard in the back. With this deck, I would never recommend starting Baby Dragon or Cannon Cart. Um, really only Tombstone, Ice Wizard, and Barbarian Barrel. Okay, now for example, take this Giant deck. With this deck, um, making a starting play is a little bit weird. If you know your opponent's deck, as you'll see a lot of ladder players do, they will start Giant in the back. But if you don't know your opponent's deck, it's kind of risky to start Giant in the back. But usually what you want to do if you don't know your opponent's deck is you would start, say, a Mega Minion or a Dark Prince at the back. And then if they go same lane as you, you can drop a Giant in front. But if they're going opposite lane as you, you can defend first. First play I'd probably do is Zapper Lock the Tower. If they're not doing anything, you know, Mega Minion. If they're not, if you don't have Mega Minion, Zapper Log and Cycle, then you Dark Prince. But Giant would be the, I guess, the fifth best starting play in this deck, but it is kind of risky to do. In some situations, it works. In some situations, like versus a P.E.K.K.A. deck, you may get, you know, screwed at the start of the game, but in general, I'd recommend playing any of these four cards first play. And then if you have like the minor variation, 
Um, obviously, you can minor first play also, and that's a pretty good play. I would definitely minor over giant in almost every situation unless you know their deck. Okay, now going to Pekka. Pekka is usually you do want to actually make the first play with this deck. What what usually what you want to do is you want to start a bandit or a ghost in the back, or you can split your minions, or you can zap the tower. Really, I would say the best starting play would be ghost. Second best would be minion. Uh, I mean, sorry, bandit. Third would be minions, and then if you don't have either of these, you can use a zap. Um, if you really have a bad starting hand, you like say you have Pekka, Ewiz, Poison, and Battle Ram, I would say you can probably go Battle Ram in the back, but I really wouldn't recommend doing it instantly. You want to wait a couple seconds to see what your opponent does. Usually you don't want to Battle Ram in the back, but if you really have to, you can. But never, ever like Battle Ram with a bridge first play. It's never a good idea. If you are going to use Battle Ram, make sure you at least play it in the back. And the reason uh, I would recommend Battle Ram over Electro Wizard is just because Electro Wizard and Pekka are kind of the crutch of the defense in this deck. So Sun decks, it's okay. If you have like another building, you can use Electro Wizard. But in this deck, since Electro Wizard and Pekka are just so solid on defense, your best defensive cards, I really wouldn't recommend starting off with Electro Wizard. And then there is this... And then there is this other variation that my teammate XOPXM made, and it's okay in this variation to start Magic Archer or Rascals um, in the back, but ideally your first starting play would be Ghost, and then second starting play would be Split Rascals, third would be Magic Archer, and probably fourth would be Log in the Tower. Log bait's a little bit weird because pretty much everything in this uh, deck is a good starting play except for Rocket and Prince. I will say that Probably the best thing to do is pressure early because this is a deck where you definitely don't want to get to double elixir. So the best starting play would probably be Goblin Barrel. Or if you have Ice Spirit in hand, obviously you Ice Spirit first and then Goblin Barrel. And then second best starting play would probably be Princess. Third best would be splitting the Goblin Gang. And fourth would just be splitting your Rascals. I guess you can lock the tower also. I mean, it kind of depends on what you feel like doing. I noticed that all the pros who play log bait, they kind of do different things to starting play. So I'm not necessarily sure like what is the exact best starting play with this deck. But um, pretty much anything you do in this deck is pretty safe as long as you're not playing your Prince Rocket or over committing. You just want to play one card at a time. You don't just want to like spam the bridge with. Goblin Gang and Prince or span the bridge with the Rascals. If you do play it, you want to split it in the back. Now, Mortar is another deck where pretty much anything you do will be a good starting play, but really what I like to do with this Mortar deck is I always start the, the Mortar first play. I've noticed all the top like ladder players, they always start Mortar first play no matter what they're facing. If you don't have Mortar in hand, usually you don't want to waste Log, you don't want to waste your Miner. What you do is you just split a troop in the back, or if you have Spear Golems, you Spear Golems with Bridge. If you don't have Spear Golems, you split a troop in the back, and then you minor opposite side of whatever troop they're attacking with. And that way you keep, because you always want to keep up the pressure with the mortar deck. You never want to let them build up a huge push. So the best way to do that is just splitting a troop in the back and then minoring opposite tower of whatever they're attacking you. This Royal Giant has kind of come back in the mail. I guess I should say, uh, first of all, I haven't used Royal Giant a whole lot. So, you know, I may, I may or may not be wrong about this, but just from what I've noticed and how you play other decks, um, like with this deck, for example, I would probably play Furnace first play, probably the best starting play because even if they were, to example, drop balloon opposite lane, you have so many um, air defenses that it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. And then, so first of all, you want to set up your Furnace. If you don't have Furnace, you just go, you know, Fire Spirits at the bridge, Log at the bridge, or Mega Minion at the back, just to cycle to your Furnace. And then once you have that Furnace down, um, then you can drop Royal Giant in the back. Or you can counter push whatever they do, and then on the counter push, you can drop Royal Giant at the bridge. But I would never, for example, drop Royal Giant at the bridge first play just because they can punish you way too hard in the opposite lane just because it's such a big elixir advantage. So, first of all, I would go Furnace, best starting play, Fire Spirit, second best, Log, third best, and then Mega Minion in the back, fourth best. And I guess guards after that. But honestly, mm, you could honestly almost start Electro Wizard over guards because guards are really only your only ground defense, so you don't really want to waste them. How do you make the first play with Royal Hogs? Um, with Royal Hogs, well, or with this deck in particular, this is probably one of the most common Royal Hog decks. Also go over the three most tier Royal Hog decks. Um, best starting play would be Tombstone. I would say second best starting play would be Royal Ghost, just because it keeps out the pressure. And then fourth would honestly be, be Rascals. I mean, third would probably be Rascals, just because Rascals is actually a really good starting play like splitting them splitting them in the back because this is a split lane deck if you're splitting rascals in the back it's kind of like the old or i guess it's kind of like the new zappies so anything that you would have done with, with zappies you can kind of do with the rascals and it works just as efficiently 
And then fourth would probably be Mega Minion, and fifth would be Magic Archer. I mean, you can start, I guess you can log the tower, but there's really no reason to in this deck just because everything in it is really such a good starting play. The one thing I would say about Royal Hog decks is that you never want to start Royal Hogs first play. Because they're a split lane deck, you always want to split troops in the back or get some kind of troop in the back before you play Royal Hogs because they can just get way too much value, something like a Bowler, a Fireball, a Valkyrie, uh, a Mega Knight. So really, the trick is you play something else in the back before you play those Royal Hogs, then you can either split them or play them offset lane to something that your opponent uh, played in the back. Now, if you're playing the Royal Hog 3 Musketeer deck, it's also not really recommended to start off the Royal Hogs first play. What I would do is I'd say Skeletons, you know, split is obviously the best play. The second best play is Ice Golem just because it's cheapest, you know. Third best play is Royal Coast, Ghost, and then the, I guess the fourth best play would be the Log. Um, one thing you can do with this deck I do quite often is I'll start an Ice Golem in the back, and then after you play that Ice Golem, then you can play a Hunter behind it. But if they go opposite lane of your Ice Golem, then you don't want to play Hunter behind. But if they go same lane or they don't play a card, then you can go Hunter behind. But I would never play Hunter first play, only if you have an Ice Golem down in front. That way, if they ignore your Hunter, it's going to at least take their tower. Okay, so with this 3 Musketeer deck, Obviously, the best starting play is Pump. You always want to start out with Pump if you have it. But the only thing to keep in mind is that if you have Pump in hands, but you don't have Goblin Gang, then you have no ground defense to defend your Pump from a Miner or, say, like a Hog in the middle. You always want to Pump in the middle in either this or this position. If you Pump in the back, it gives them easy Miner or Rocket value. So you always Pump in the middle, and then you only Pump if, you know, you have your Goblin Gang to defend your Pump because, say, they Miner your Pump. If you're not having a Goblin Gang to defend that Miner, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Other than that, honestly, I think that from listening in on what the best of the best do, the only starting play they'll make with this deck is Pump. But if you're not, like, super wishy-washy about winning every single game, I haven't necessarily used this 3 musk variation, like, a ton. But from using other 3 Musketeer variations, one trick that I would do that almost always worked is... I would either, you know, you could split Goblin Gang in the back, but you really want to save it to defend a pump. What you can do is zap the tower, probably preferable. Then minor the tower would be the second preferable play. And then third preferable play, if you don't have pump in hand, is you'd ice skull in the back, you wait to see what their move is, and then whatever they drop, you would drop two musketeers towards the side that they drop a troop on. That way, if they um, decide to rush you, your two musketeers are going to have enough DPS to kill their tank. And if they do decide to rush you in single elixir, they're not going to have enough elixir to fireball zap you or lightning you or rocket you and rush you at the same time. And then what that does is after you drop those two musketeers, after you've already dropped the ice golem, um, it baits out their fireball or baits out their big spell. So that means that you can pump up. And after you pump up, they're not going to have a big spell to kill your pump. So you're going to have a huge elixir advantage. Okay, now how do you play expo? This is kind of... It's kind of the similar starting play with both these actual decks. First of all, what you want to do is you just want to play your cheapest card in hand. So in this deck, it would be Skeletons would be the best starting play, then Ice Golem would be the second best starting play, then um, Log would be the fourth best, and then Ice Wizard would probably be better to start than Mega Minion. But usually what I do is I'll drop... If I do have Ice Golem and Cycle and I don't have like Skeletons Cycle, I'll drop Ice Golem first, I'll wait and see whatever card they play, and then you drop an Ice Wizard or Mega Minion behind. You know, if they're if they're like not dropping cards, then you can go with your Expo at the Bridge after you've already dropped an Ice Wizard, an Ice Comb, or a Mega Minion. But if they are dropping cards, then you just want to defend before you drop the Expo. And then it's really similar with the Archer's variation, because with the Archer variation, what you want to do is just start your, you know, Skeletons or Ice Spirit in the back, just cycle them. Um, you can log chip or you can split archers. The only thing I will say is with this deck, you don't usually want to waste Ice Golem because he's your only like ground, like true ground tank. But any of these other cards work, work the cycle. And then if you don't have any in hand, you can start Ice Golem. But I would say archers, skeletons, Ice Spirit, and log are all better to start than that. And then as with the other expo deck, they're not doing anything after you cycle the card. You after you cycle your Ice Golem, then you cycle your archers. Then you can drop the expo, but if they are doing something, you got to defend first. And then drop expo opposite lane if they drop like a tank. Now, Bridge Spam is another deck you always want to start off the game. So, usually the best turn play would be Ice Golem. And then after you drop that Ice Golem, what I like to do is I like to, if I have Infernal Dragon in hand, I'll cycle my Infernal Dragon. Because what that does is, if they choose to ignore my Infernal Dragon Ice Golem, it's like 110% going to take their tower. But if they choose to go same lane as it, then... 
it means that my Inferno Dragon is going to kill whatever tank that they drop. And if they do rush opposite lane, I still have Lumberjack, you know, and Royal Ghost. And mainly, mainly Lumberjack is a big deal. You need your Lumberjack to stop their tank. Or if they drop like a balloon, you can fireball their balloon. And now with the knockback effect, it's fine. So you can cycle an Inferno Dragon, but you only want to cycle it after you've already cycled your Ice Golem. Okay, so first best play would probably be Ice Golem. Second best play would probably be Zap. Third best play would be Royal Ghost, and then fourth best play would be Magic Arch. You never want to start like a Lumberjack or a Battle Ram in the back because you always want to save those cards. You always want to save the Lumberjack to defense, and then you always want to save the Battle Ram to rush opposite lane. Best turn play in this deck is going to be the Tombstone. Let me actually put minions in here so it's more reasonable. So best turn play is going to be the Tombstone. You never want to waste your, usually this would be guards, you never want to waste your guards. Um, if you have Zap, you can zap the tower. Really what you want to do is you want to cycle to the tombstone, place down your tombstone, and then you can play your Lava Hound. So the way that you can cycle to that tombstone, if you don't have it in certain hand, would be Mega Minion or Minions or Zap. You never want to cycle your Skarmie or you know Goblin Gang or Guards because it's really your own your only ground tank. So you always want to cycle that tombstone. Once you got the tombstone, you place down the tombstone. You defend whatever they do, and then after your defense, if your tombstone's still alive, or if they've wasted their win condition, then you can drop Lava Hound in the back. And then with the Pompeo deck, this deck is a little bit weird. I'm going to go into training camp to show you the starting plays. It's a really unorthodox deck, and this is what Pompeo does. I've noticed to start the game. First of all, he would always start tombstone starting play. It's usually, or I guess against some decks he may not, but you'll notice that against like Cherry Standard or whatever, he usually starts tombstone starting play. And then... If he doesn't have Tombstone starting play, he'll play his Ice Golem. Well, first of all, he would drop, he would cycle a Mega Minion over an Ice Golem. And then second, he will play as, he likes to save his Ice Golem and not play it. So he'd prefer to cycle like an Inferno Dragon or a Mega Minion. But if he has like no Tombstone, no Inferno Dragon or a Mega Minion in the back, he'll play his Ice Golem high so that he can pressure with Balloon if they choose to ignore the Ice Golem. Or if they don't choose to ignore the Ice Golem, he'll just go Inferno Dragon or Mega Minion in the back. Uh, same lane of whatever they drop. His favorite starting play would probably be Tombstone. Um, pretty sure his second favorite starting play is Mega Minion. Third favorite is Ice Golem. If he doesn't have either of those, he'll zap the tower. If he doesn't have any of those, he'll miter the tower. And yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the video. I'm pretty sure that I went over every matchup. Um, I'm, hopefully I didn't forget any. So, funny story. I was editing this and I realized that I forgot to talk about Hog Rider. With a Hog Rider deck, it's like always a good play to start the game with Hog Rider. With the Inferno Dragon version, it's a good play. With the, um, with the Rocket Princess version, uh, with that deck, usually you want to split bats in the back or ice here before you start Hog, but still Hog like second play is a good play. If you don't have Hog in hand, what you can do is drop Skeletons, Ice Spirit, or the Log. If you don't, if you don't have any of those cards in hand, Ice Golem would be the fifth, fifth best starting play. And then after you drop that Ice Golem, if they go same lane as your Ice Golem, you want to drop Musketeer. If they go opposite lane of your Ice Golem, you just drop Musketeer on the side that they're attacking you with. Or if by that point you've cycled the Hog, you can play Hog at the Brig bridge opposite lane. So all the information in this video is what I found from watching Clash Royale and playing Clash Royale for over two and a half years. I mean, I'm not, you know, the best in the world at every single one of these decks, obviously, but I have played at least a thousand games with like every single one of these decks. So I do think that most of the information I give you is accurate. You know, take these Take these things with a grain of salt. If you watch TV Royale replays, if you watch some of the best players in the world, you may notice that they do different starting plays from what I've watched, but if they do do different starting plays, then it's probably because they already know their opponent's deck, so they're not afraid to start off the game because they know they can start with, for example, um, a giant in the back, and they're not going to get punished for it. But yeah, if you're playing tournament standard where you don't know their deck, usually everything I said in this video is pretty safe to do. Start a 1 elixir, 2 elixir, or 3 elixir card, or anything else in a specific matchup that I went over. Thank you guys for watching, and Vulcan out.